Z-Sonic, the heart of your system. Alright guys, Dominic here for Kitgu, and after a three week wait since the initial launch of the RTX 2060 Super and the RTX 2070 Super, today we can present our review of Nvidia's RTX 2080 Super. And not only do we have a Founders Edition here, but we also have MSI's RTX 2080 Super Gaming X Trio as well. So to quickly go over some of the core specs, what's new with the 2080 Super, it is still using the TU-104 GPU, which is actually the basis for the original RTX 2080. Unlike that original card though, the 2080 Super is a full implementation of the TU-104 GPU. So instead of having 46 SMs, it actually has two more up to 48. And that means it also has 128 extra CUDA cores, giving it a total of 3072 versus 2944 on the original 2080. That may not sound like a very big spec bump, there's not really an extra 128 CUDA cores, but Nvidia is also supplying the 2080 Super with new memory. So where so far we've seen all of the other RTX cards running its GDDR6 memory at 14 gigabits per second, now with the 2080 Super they are running new chips clocked at 15.5 gigabits per second. As for boost clocks as well, so the Founders Edition 2080 Super is clocked at 1815 megahertz boost, whereas this MSI is actually factory overclocked by 30 megahertz, giving it an 1845 megahertz boost. In terms of pricing as well, the RTX 2080 Super has a MSRP of 6 669 pounds here in the UK and the Founders Edition does come in at that MSRP. We are still waiting for confirmed pricing at the time of filming for this MSI card but based on our past experience particularly given that we looked at this same model for the 2070 Super and that was significantly more expensive so I think it's safe to say we can expect something similar for this 2080 Super as well. That's really it for our just quick spec introduction for this new card however we're going to dive straight into the performance now and it's worth saying in this video we're going to be looking at our 1440p benchmarks although we do of course have 1080p and 4k results over on kitguru.net if you want to check those out so if we get the charts up for you now i think it's probably not too much of a surprise that given 2080 super does have 128 more cuda cores than the original 2080 and its memory is also clocked faster it's no surprise to see 2080 super outperforming the original 2080 in every single one of our benchmarks that being said, the gap isn't actually that big. I thought maybe it would be slightly bigger, especially with the high clock memory. Uh, in actual fact, in some of our 1080p charts, we saw the difference being as little as 2%, although often at 1080p we are introducing a little bit more of a CPU bottleneck. Whereas the biggest difference we actually saw came at 4K, where the 2080 Super proved 7% faster than the 2080. Across all of our benchmarks, however, 2080 Super is on average 4% faster than the original 2080. On top of that, the MSI Gaming X Trio does outperform the 2080 Super Founders Edition by 2%, so not very much of a lead there, but is definitely something to factor in. If we compare the 2080 Super to the 2070 Super, here we can see an 11% performance increase for the 2080 Super, which is on average. And then again, looking at something like the AMD RX 5700 XT, here we can see a 16% performance increase for Nvidia's new card. Bearing in mind that the 2080 Super is actually almost £200 more expensive than the 2070 Super and almost double the price of the 5700 XT, it really doesn't paint it in a very good light in terms of overall value, but we'll save most of that for our conclusion. That is pretty much it for our overall look at performance. However, like we said, it's not really a big leap forward from the original 2080 at all. And we also said you only gain an extra 2% when going with a factory overclock card like this MSI Gaming X Trio. That being said, we did actually see some pretty decent gains when manually overclocking. So starting with our Founders Edition, here we were able to add an extra 110 megahertz to the GPU core, but 1,250 megahertz to the memory, so a 2.5 gigabits per second real-world increase. 
As for our MSI Gaming X Trio, we could only add an extra 70 megahertz to the GPU core, but the memory actually overclocked even further with an extra 1400 megahertz or 2.8 gigabits per second in the real world. So definitely two pretty good overclocks, especially on the memory side of things where we significantly increased the overall bandwidth and accordingly we saw a very healthy increase to our average frame rates. Going back through our 1440p benchmarks we actually saw frame rate increases typically between 8 to 10 fps depending on the game so overall very healthy and for the founders edition that makes it an average performance increase of nine percent it wasn't quite as big for the msi card with an average performance increase of seven percent that was mainly because we weren't able to overclock the core as much it was already slightly factory overclocked but even so still an extra 70 megahertz definitely improve things in terms of overall clock speed these overclocks weren't actually enough to fully close the gap on the 2080 ti but we definitely saw that there is a lot of potential a lot of untapped headroom for these cards particularly when it comes to that g6 memory like we already said like 18 gigabits per second over 15.5 stock i think is a very decent increase and an overall increase of nine percent for our founders edition is definitely not something to be sniffed at we're going to move on now to look at the cards themselves although spoiler alert we've actually seen both of these designs before the 2080 super is actually reusing the same card design as both the 2070 super as well as the original 2080 whereas this gaming x trio from msi is actually the same design as the 2070 super gaming x trio we looked at only a couple weeks ago starting with the founders edition though like we said it is the same as the 2070 super but that is definitely not a bad thing not only is the card incredibly well built with its aluminium shroud but the dual axial fan design is much better than the previous blower style cars we saw from nvidia and we'll look at things like our temperatures and acoustics very shortly being one of the new supercards as well we can also see that new mirror finish section in between the two fans while nvidia has also printed the super logo here in green so it's functionally it is the same as the original 2080 although that mirror finish section and the green logo does just help kind of spruce things up a little bit in terms of the aesthetic turning the card over now we also have this same silver backplate which is full length and kind of wraps around at the end to give it an almost unibody design while we can also see again the 2080 super logo here printed in the middle of the backplate as for our power requirements again same as 2070 super with one six pin and one eight pin while we can also see the same video outputs with three display ports one hdmi and then one usb-c that does pretty much wrap it up like we said it is the same as the 2070 super so if you have seen that card if you've seen the original 2080 for that matter they are functionally exactly the same the msi on the other hand is quite a lot bigger that's probably the first thing i noticed it actually measures in at 328 millimeters by 140 by 56.5 millimeters and you can also see that it has got a triple fan cooler and these are using msi's new torx 3.0 fan design interestingly two of the fans actually measure 100 millimeters the both that are kind of further on the right while the fan which is nearest the IO bracket actually measures 90 millimeters so it's just slightly smaller elsewhere the card is still using that same gunmetal gray and plastic shroud we saw on the 2070 super gaming x trio and i definitely think it is a good looking card although it doesn't feel quite as premium as the all aluminium founders edition i do really like that backplate on this card however it is made of brushed metal but you can actually see it's kind of brushed in two different directions so depending on how the light hits it that gives it a really nice two-tone look i've said in previous videos i do really like this design it also covers the full length of the pcb and is mostly plain apart from the msi dragon logo positioned on the right hand side of the backplate now we did also take this card apart to get a look at the pcb and yep you guessed it it is the same design as the 2070 super gaming x trio although msi has actually beefed up the power delivery it's got a 10 plus 2 phase configuration on this 2080 super whereas the 2070 super was an 8 plus 2 power phase configuration we also get a look at those new 15.5 gigabits per second memory chips and on this particular model they are actually from samsung not micron although we did speak to nvidia and they confirmed that you could get chips from either Micron or Samsung just like the rest of the RTX series so nothing new there although it was interesting that actually both of our day one cards had Samsung memory so just something to point out the last thing to look at is that cool and again it hasn't changed from the 2070 super model it's got seven nickel plated heat pipes uh, six of those actually measure six millimeters in diameter 
while the last one is slightly thicker at 8mm and we can also see that the GPU itself contacts with a smaller cold plate while there is a secondary cold plate for the VRM as well and that has thermal pads in all the right places. So that is it for our look at the cards themselves. How well these perform in terms of kind of noise levels and temperatures. We will start with temperatures first and things are pretty much as expected. So our found position, we saw the GPU peak at 75 degrees, although MSI was able to reduce this by seven degrees with the GPU peaking at 68 degrees. So both results, like I said, pretty much as expected with our found edition running one degree hotter than the original 2080 Super, but still two degrees cooler than the 2080 Ti. The Founders does run a little bit louder than the original 2080, however, with noise levels peaking around 44 decibels, which is audible, but still not very annoying whatsoever. Although as expected, MSI does significantly reduce that down to just under 39 decibels. That is still about two decibels louder than the 2070 Super Gaming X Trio, although again, I suppose that is to be expected considering it's essentially the same cooler on a higher core count chip. So we would expect, you know, slightly higher temperatures and slightly higher noise levels to compensate for that core count increase. It is still a fantastically quiet card, however, and once it is installed in a case, I think you would be really hard pressed to actually be able to hear the fan spinning. Lastly, as for power consumption, while both cards are actually rated at 250 watts, we did actually see the Gaming X Trio pull around 12 watts more at the wall. And I think that'd be a combination of the fact that it has a slightly higher clock speed while it also has an extra fan as well. Even so, both results are still actually really close to the 2080 Ti, despite that car being 16% faster on average. So then, should you buy the RTX 2080 Super? In my eyes, the answer is a resounding no, for one simple reason, it just represents very poor value for money. To be clear, it is actually still a good card. It is faster than the original 2080 and it gives you very good frame rates at 1440p where it would be well suited to being paired with a high refresh rate monitor. The problem is if we compare it to the RTX 2070 Super, it is just 11% faster and that's for an almost 200 pound increase. That works out as 11% extra performance for a 41% price increase. Compared to the RX 5700 XT, it looks even worse with the 2080 Super proving 16% faster on average, though it costs almost double that AMD card. So just in terms of pure value for money, it is very, very unappealing and just looks very bad value. Those numbers are actually all related to the £669 MSRP as well for the Founds Edition, but that doesn't take into account the MSI Gaming X Trio. We don't yet have confirmed pricing like I said, but given what we've already seen from previous models of the Gaming X Trio, it is likely to be very expensive with a significant price premium over the MSRP. We've actually been told that some cards are going to be priced up to £799, and while I can't yet tell you exactly what the pricing for this card is going to be, I would definitely say it will be closer to £800 than it would be to £700. So that makes the value proposition look even worse. For me, that really does just sum it up. I think you'd have to have more money than sense to go out and buy a 2080 Super when it costs almost £200 more than the 2070 Super, yet the performance increase is relatively limited. Like I said, to be clear, this is not a bad card. It just makes no sense at its current price of £669. If we're priced, you know, £100 cheaper, then it's definitely looking like it'd make a little bit more sense as the next step up. But at £669, it just represents very poor value for money. So that is it guys for my review of NVIDIA's new RTX 2080 Super. Uh, we've also been looking at the MSI RTX 2080 Super Gaming X Trio. If you like this video, you can give us a thumbs up. Also leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Would anyone go out and buy this card for £669 or even more? the MSI model, do let me know your thoughts down below. Please do also hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you can be notified about all of our upcoming videos. If you like this t-shirt I've been wearing today, you can also check out our full range of Kit Guru merch, which is linked in the description below. And lastly, if you would like to get some of our videos early, as well as access to exclusive giveaways, you can consider backing us on Patreon. Until then though, guys, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.